welcome, Julio. Aren't you guys amazed by the performances? Especially the last one, I was looking for the strings. Did you see the strings attached on her? Amazing! And to have this sort of equipment, which it was not designed for singing, and to sound that beautiful, it was awesome to hear. So thank you so much for preparing the mood for the lecture. Everyone, allow me to start by wishing peace in our hearts. This topic, it is so profound that there are many approaches that we can address the issue of peace because immediately begs the question of what disturbs our harmony. We could spend hours and hours, days and days, seminars after seminars, and we will still not find a single answer to address the problem. And the reason so, it's because there are many factors that disturbs our personal and our collective peace. So when someone gets sick, they go to the hospital, and the doctor will follow an approach to address the problem of sickness. First, he will ask you for the symptoms. What are you feeling? And you say, well, doc, I have runny nose, fever, I got the chills. These are the symptoms. So then he will order some tests to be done to arrive at a diagnosis. After he gets a correct diagnosis, then he will give you the prognosis. Are you going to be okay? Is this a solvable problem? That's the prognosis. And then the fourth step will follow. The treatment, how we're going to cure you. So we have four steps. Symptoms, diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment. The most important step you might think is the treatment, but it is not. The most important step is the diagnosis. Because if we have the wrong diagnosis, we will not solve the problem. If your car stops running and the cause of the problem is the alternator, what's the diagnosis? Let's change the alternator. You have a default alternator. So the treatment will be buy a new alternator, replace it. If you keep changing the radio in the car, will that work? Yes or no? I can hear you. No. no. Because the cause of the problem is the alternator, therefore the solution is to replace the alternator. Same goes with our physical disturbances. And the correct course, it's based on the diagnosis. If we look at our collective problems and our individual problems, we might find the solution by taking the same approach. And when it comes to peace, we like to believe that if we had peace in the world, we also be peaceful individuals. And that's not necessarily true because we keep waiting for governments to establish world peace. And there is a huge difference between world peace and our inner peace. What are the symptoms of world lack of peace? Well, wars that are direct result of lack of resources not enough access to energy, food, our basic needs, water. There are a couple of countries in this world that have as their goal 
to serve to its people drinking water. Here we are in the year 2014, and we're still addressing a simple issue of having drinkable water. So obviously, if there is a limited resource of drinkable water to four different countries, how are they going to resolve the issue? By fighting one another. Because whoever have access to the water have power, have control over the region. Hence, the wars. So there are some people who argue that we can solve this problem by providing enough resources to everybody. Yes, it will solve many of the challenges we face. And this is why we had great people in our history giving us guidance of how we can address this issue. We have Mohandas Karashan Gandhi. This is one individual establishing peace in the world. As you'll know through history, England was in control of India. And this is not just a problem of who's managing, who's the president. This is about distributing the resources equally. If you have one race who is benefiting from all the resources, while the majority of the races living in the same country are lacking resources, you will have problems. This is not a problem of dictatorship. If the dictators well fed their subjects, there would not be any problems. The problems that we have with dictators is that they want to benefit only themselves or the group they belong to while the majority are starving. So Mahatma Gandhi addressed the problem by fighting for equality. Not the privilege of the Indians, but for all. And he addressed the issue of violence by saying, if one man is able to achieve the epitome of love, he's able to neutralize the hatred of millions. And he was able to do that. Because there are a couple of instances in which the people were in conflict, killing themselves and him. And Mahatma Gandhi, through his own sacrifice, by showing that he could not teach the people not to kill by killing others, he starved himself. And he was able to appease his people's conflicts. We have another individual. As the story folds pages after page, we always mention his name with great respect and love. Nelson Mandela. Did Nelson Mandela had a problem with race per se? The problem is the fact of distribution of resources because a minority of the people living in South Africa had special privileges to the healthcare system, to the educational system, even to the entertainment system. So he didn't fight for the superiority of the blacks. He fought for the equality of all races. And this is why, in 1993, he received the Nobel Peace Prize. Martin Luther King Jr., a very well forgotten he hero. So few mentioned of this man. It saddens us that when you check YouTube videos, some of this nonsense Empty culture videos have millions of views, yet he speeches. They are able to transform individuals and entire societies have more than a million views. This man did not fight for a superiority of a race, but rather for the equality of all. So we can stop our inner conflicts within our cities, states, and country. This is one individual making an impact on millions of lives. More currently, we have Mr. Jeremy Guiley. Have you ever heard of this man? Jeremy Guiley? He says when he was only 12 years old, 
only 12 years old. He was doing acting classes in his high school. And he watched a video about children starving and the conflicts over food. And being only 12, somehow that touched his heart. And he heard that the media were responsible for most of our conflicts. And what did he mean by this? Is that our media, most of the time, instead of inflaming peace and harmony, it does actually the opposite. Look at the shows that we watch on TV. War of the Brides, War of the Cookers, Chef Wars, the War of the Architects, even something as naive and simple as a cupcake, they actually made a show entitled Cupcake Wars. How can you make a war out of cupcakes? And this language, the nomenclature that we use, sends message constantly to the viewers. It's a subliminal message. If war, if battles become the normal, we will try to solve all of the issues with battles and wars. The movies are constantly portraying violence. Back in the 1960s, they did an experiment called the Subliminal Message Experiment. In this experiment, you will drive in, in one of the driving movies, and you'll be watching a movie, and at the bottom of the screen, there was a line that blinked so fast that people couldn't read what the line read. But basically, the line said, drink Coca-Cola, drink Coca-Cola, drink Coca-Cola. So here you are watching this movie for two hours without realizing that you are absorbing this message because your subconsciousness is constantly absorbing messages. At the end of the movie, Sprite, water, lemonade was available, but which drink they picked? Coca-Cola. On the following weekend, they changed to Sprite. And here they are. Everyone is watching this movie without realizing that there is a line which says, drink Sprite, drink Sprite. But their subconsciousness is absorbing the message. Drink Sprite, drink Sprite, drink Sprite. At the end of the movie, there's water, Coke, lemonade available. But which one they picked? Sprite. So if you're watching a movie and the message is, kill, kill, kill. Punch, punch, punch. Scream, scream, scream. It doesn't mean that you're going to finish watching that movie and you will walk into the person next to you and going to punch their face. That's, that's not the way it works. It works when there is a moment that calls for your reaction. You're going to react based on how you have fed your mind with. So you're just going to work. You're just driving to school and somebody cuts you. What do you do? You scream at them. You swivel the car against them. You're giving them some signs that I'm not going to show it to you. You've seen them before, right? Wherever it calls for their reaction, they will react based on what they have fed their subconscious mind with. Difficult moments in our lives are just like a big squeezer. If you squeeze an orange juice, juice, what comes out of the orange? What kind of juice? Is it watermelon? Lemon? No. Difficult circumstances in your life are just a huge squeezer. What's going to come out of you, it's what you carry inside you. So if I react with violence, it's that I carry within myself violence. If I react in a peaceful way, it's what I carry inside me. So if my children are playing video games that's constantly giving them the message, kill, 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 punch, 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 what else can I expect from this individual than react that way? So our houses 
should be very peaceful in a way that we should choose very wisely what kind of songs we're going to play inside our house, what kind of movies we're going to watch, because these movies, these musics, these songs, they live a vibrational energy in our home. Choose wisely, because that might create many problems in our lives. So this man, which back then was a boy, Jeremy Guiley, he decided that if he was an actor with a camera, he could change the world. This is one boy having a dream of acting and playing with a camera. And he started making interviews in his school. And from his school, he went to the town, from the town to the state, from the state to the country, from this country to other countries. And he traveled the world documenting what was going on to bring about awareness. Because how can we change a problem? How can we make a diagnosis? How can we identify if we don't even know that it exists? That's the power of art through television, to make people aware. And he did this. So much so that his work was appreciated by UN. And he fought not with guns, but he fought with his heart. He considered, just like Mahatma Gandhi used to consider himself, I am a soldier. I'm a soldier of peace. Because to produce peace, you need lots of actions. So he went to the UN and he started a campaign for one day of peace. One day of peace. And because of him, September 21st of every year, the world commemorates the world of peace. That is a huge achievement for this planet to bring awareness. Now, who is this man again? A 12-year-old boy from a high school that conquered his dreams by following his heart. World peace will be established when we have enough resources. Mainly, the wars are the result of selfishness, dictatorship, the control of the natural resources. There are even some people who argued that the entire UFO phenomena, it's all true. And the reason why governments they blocked us from knowing that we have visitors from other planets. It's for the simple fact that these people are more advanced than us in technology. And they want to bring to us their technology of how to produce free electricity. So free energy is available to us all. But that will automatically kill all the companies who are in charge of this planet. Because if we don't need oil, once you don't, you're not dependent on a company, that company ceases to control the world. The private bank in the US, are you guys aware that this is not a US government property? That this is a, a private bank? The treasure of the United States, it's a private bank? So these people, argue that even if we bring awareness about the UFO phenomena, that would change things. Because these people who are coming from out of planets, they are trying to give us an opportunity for the next leap of our progress. Just two months ago, the test telescope Kepler added more than 1,400 new planets into our solar system. This telescope was able to photograph, to detect an additional 1,400 new planets. And this is only in our little galaxies. You know how many galaxies there are? Approximately 300 billion galaxies. We don't even know what that number is. Are we alone in the universe? Obviously not. And when it comes 
for us as a humanity to prove that we have other humanities in different planets, in different universe, maybe that will stop our wars in here. Because now we will not feel so lonely anymore. We will stop our fighting period to start a world of peace. Our documented history only registered 250 years of peace. 250. That's it. We have recorded our history for approximately 5,000 years. During the 5,000 years, we have 250 years of peace. That's a very small quantity. Why? The control of resources. Our idea how we diagnose the problem. We diagnose the problem thinking that we must protect ourselves. How do we protect ourselves? By arming ourselves. If you purchase a gun, you are sending the subliminal message to your neighbor that he must protect himself as well. And what is he going to buy? A gun. And we're all going to arm ourselves to protect ourselves. More guns, eventually more killing. So when a country arms themselves to protect themselves, what's the message they're sending? Arm yourself as well. In order to help people promote their business so idea could be funded. It's called the Startup Program. The US gave $9 billion, approximately $9 billion. And that's a lot of money. But on a global scale, that's nothing. But to modernize the nuclear weapons, approximately $90 billion was suggested. To modernize the nuclear weapons, we invest $90 billion. To help those who have a new idea to spread to the world, we give them $9 billion. If we spent the resources that we have available, to foster peace by promoting resources, by promoting new ideas. Eventually, we will contribute to world peace. But let's imagine we had world peace. Would that automatically bring you your peace? No, it wouldn't. Because the definition of world peace is the absence of wars, absence of conflicts. Our personal definition of our own peace is not the absence of conflicts. An individual could be very much at peace, yet have many conflicts, personal conflicts. The definition of individual peace is when we fulfill our obligations as a human being. You will experience what we crave for, peace, when you fulfill your obligation as an individual. And what obligation do you have towards you? You have an obligation to better yourself. That's obligation number one. You are on this planet with a mission. And that mission is to better yourself. If you're not bettering yourself, you will not experience peace. Peace is the result of you fulfilling this mission in which you are born for. Otherwise, if you are an atheist, you believe that the cause of your life is just a simple accident. And there are many atheists who have different reasons why they don't believe in God. And as a matter of fact, the main source of the creation for atheists are religious people who don't leave their message. Are people who claim themselves to be religious, yet their personal lives are very different from what they preach. That is the main cause of atheists. So if you believe that your life is an accident, all this is very nonsense to you. What's the reason for you to better yourself? 
If you are attending your needs, then you're supposed to be at peace. This is the peace of the world, not world peace, but peace of the world. Jesus Christ, in John 14, verses 27, he said, My peace I leave unto you, but is not the peace of the world. What is the peace of the world? Well, if we like food, you're a hungry individual, your peace is sitting in a diner and eating until you explode yourself. You go to one of those uh, $9.99 buffet, and you make sure you eat about $90 instead of $9.99. You unbutton your pants, and then you go for one plate, the second plate, and the third plate, and you look at these plates, you can barely see the other person in front of them. That's how big they are. And then at the end of the third plate, they usually say, let me reserve some space for dessert. Space for dessert. What space is that? You know, after the third plate, for that person, this will be peace. But this is not real peace. This is an illusion. Because eating this much, you eventually cause yourself diabetes, hypertension, and hence the disease will come. As a message that we shouldn't be doing that to ourselves. If Sex will bring the disturbed people peace. That will be sex with many different partners. And that sort of peace, it's not real peace. It's just a psychological disturbance. This could be someone who was sexually abused as a child by a relative. And as they grow older, they want to kill the message of the person with each person they sleep with. It's a mental disturbance. And sex, just like food, the more you do it constantly, the more annoyed it gets. Let's say you like vanilla ice cream. And you get to eat vanilla ice cream every day, 10 times per day. At the end of the third day, you cannot even look at vanilla ice cream. Same goes for the mental disturbance of sex with different people. That's not peace. That could be world, the peace of the world. For the people who are greedy, having peace, it's having a lot of money. Yet, when we look at suicide statistics, no other kind of people kill themselves more on this planet than rich people. Therefore, money will not bring you peace. That would be the peace of the world, but not the peace that the Prince of Peace claimed that he would give it to us. What kind of peace is this? It's a peace when we conquer our inner selves. When we diagnose the problem correctly, which is the problem is not on the outside, the problem is in the inside. My internal conflicts how can I conquer myself? That will bring me peace. And if we have a world of peaceful individuals, eventually we'll have a peaceful world. But even if the governments establish peace, pieces, peace, and we personally don't have peace in our world, it is impossible for us to live in harmony, to be in peace with one another. So our obligation to achieve our peace is to better ourselves. You were born with a mission, a mission to conquer your inner conflicts. Until we're not doing that with our lives, we will not experience happiness. Let's say I have a pen in my hand. Is this pen a creation or a creator? A pen that you have in your hand, is it a creation or a creator? It's a creation. Now, the creator of this creation designed this creation for what? To write. If I use this creation for the purpose which was designed for, it will perfectly work. It will work perfectly. Now, if I try to use this pen as a hammer, and I try to break this podium, will that work? Absolutely not. 
If I try to use this pen as a screwdriver, would that work? No. I will break the pen, but I will not achieve my objective. So our lives will not work until we're not doing with our lives what it was designed for. The only reason our lives don't work is because we keep using it for the purposes which we were not designed for. Our Creator designed you with a purpose. And that purpose is to better yourself. And in the process of you bettering yourself, all the follow your actions. Because there's nothing more powerful to change those around us by living the message. Our own way of conducting ourselves will drag those towards the good path. So if you want to install, establish world peace, how are you going to do this? By creating peace in your inner world. How do you do that? You fulfill your obligations. What's your obligation? To better yourself. And to better myself, I need to know what's broken about me. And that's where enemies come to be very helpful, to let me know what's broken about me. Usually, when we have friends, friends are afraid to tell us the truth about us. Friends were not there to be honest with us because they don't want to hurt our feelings. So let's say I'm waking up every day at 11, 12 o'clock, and I say to myself that I'm looking for a job. Still, it's 11 o'clock and I'm sleeping. I'll be looking for a job for the past six months and I don't have one. A friend of ours will probably say something like this. Oh, I think the reason you don't have a job is because the companies are not hiring. That's the reason you don't have a job. Our enemy, in turn, would say, you lazy. You bum. You don't have a job because you're simply lazy. If we have the humbleness to get this message, we will learn something very important about our character. And by overcoming our laziness, that will bring about change within us. That will bring peace. But most of us, when we're relating with other people and we hear this sort of message, what do we do? We become against the individual who has given us a very important information about us. Because we still think that our peace is related to what others do to us instead of what we do to others. How many of you are aware of other people who are completely disturbed by other people's opinion about them? If someone talks very highly of you, you're not going to get any better. If someone talks very low of you, you're not going to get worse. You are who you are and not other people's opinion. But is that how it works? No. We are infuriated by people's gossip about us. And boy, are we addicted to gossiping. Our tongues, they twinkle when we want to speak about someone else's life. And we are disturbed by their opinion. When in reality, we can control the message, understanding if this is the truth, I have an obligation to better myself because that's what I was born for to empower myself, to correct my imperfections. But if I have a distortion of reality placed on my eyes, I'll see this individual as enemy. And that's the beauty of Spiritism teachings. It teaches us that our enemies are our teachers. They are letting us know something very important about us. There are two ways we can learn. Either we can learn through love or we can learn through pain. How can we learn through love? We read. We watch other people's example. We are humble to listen to other people's advice. That's learning through love. 
because it doesn't cause us any pain. But because of our stubbornness, we most likely to learn through the painful process. And that's when something bad happened to, to us and we realize all the good advices we're receiving from the people who loves us, they are there actually to help us. They are not against us. So from now on, I will create my peace by looking at my enemies, not as people who I hate, but my teachers who are showing something very valuable about myself. If they're saying something that is correct about me, I should change myself. If they're saying something that does not represent the truth, if we make a cold analysis of ourselves and we say, well, this is certainly a lie. This person just want to put me down. Then we discard the message. We leave the garbage with this other person and then they will stink, not us, with that information. Bullying right now disturbs a lot of people's peace, especially in the school system, where you are at the age in which you're looking for self-affirmation. You're trying to establish yourself as a person on this planet. And unfortunately, we create this illusion that if I want to feel good, I must put someone down. Whoever puts you down, and if you are that individual, that shows something about you. You are miserable yourself. And because you lack the courage to promote yourself higher, you like to push people down so you have an illusion that you're doing better than them. Whoever bullies someone else, they are miserable people themselves. Because when we are at peace with ourselves, when we, when we are experiencing happiness, we don't promote other people's pain. We don't like to see other people suffering. Those who make people suffer, they are suffering themselves. And in order to have an illusion that they are alleviating their pain, their pain they like to see other people suffering. That's where it comes from. So if someone is saying something about you, analyze it. Is this positive or negative? Is it true or false? If it's true, I have an obligation to better myself. If it's false, then I discard it. We will all at that moment experience anger. It's a natural reaction. But what we do with our anger, it differentiates the men from the boys, the girls from the women, the wise from the ignorant, how we deal with our emotions. Definitely Mahatma Gandhi experienced anger, but he channeled his anger to have energy to establish his movement of peace. Definitely Nelson Mandela experienced anger he, ch he channeled that anger to establish his movement of peace. Because we all experience the emotion of anger. It's a physiological process. But what we do with that anger, it's what differentiates the wise people from the ignorant. So when you do with that emotion, you stop right there and ponder what you're going to do. By seeing people in the jail system, committing crimes after crimes. One congruence about all these people is not that they had a problem, it's how they handled that problem. They handled that problem with the heated head. They did something while they were not thinking. They said, I completely blacked out. And it's not that they were not seeing what they're doing, they were simply not thinking of what they're doing because they were acting with the heated head. So whenever you are in those circumstances, in the heat of your anger, don't act on it. Walk away. Take a walk, you breathe, you pray, you meditate, you listen to a peaceful song, anything that will calm you down. Because if you act with your anger, you will regret afterwards. It's how you channel that anger. Because many peaceful people, they experience anger. As a matter of fact, there's a joke about this Zen Buddhist 
who went around the world preaching about peace. And his most famous lecture was, the change is from within. So he went all around the world preaching peace. The change is from within. And one day he came to New York City. He was walking around and he became hungry. So he stopped in one of those hot dog cars. He asked for a hot dog. And in New York, a hot dog might cost you $5. He looked on his wallet. He had no singles. So he gave $100 bill to this man. And he started eating the hot dog, waiting for the change. And the man didn't do anything. And he says, where is my change? And the hot dog man said, the change comes from within. <laughs> He experienced anger at that moment, but it's how we channel our anger. Don't act on a heated mind. That moment is teaching us something very special. What brings on you, the reactions that you feel when dealing with people, it's an important information about you. Your emotions are telling you something about you. It's telling you the diagnosis. So you can work on, on the treatment. If we continue our lives thinking that others are responsible for our pain, we will expect these people to change in order for our lives to improve. And that will never happen. That will never take place. The moment we realize that we are responsible for our peace and we are not depending on others, we will work on the treatment by understanding my peace is the result of my betterment. And I better myself by helping those around me better themselves. Here in the U.S., there is a, a corn competition. Farmers get together and then compete for the best corn. And this man, year after year, he planted the best corn. So the reporter from Farmers Magazine came to interview him to know the secret of the best corn. And he said, well, the reason why I have the best corn, it's because I give my seeds to my neighbors. And the man said, I don't get it. You give your seeds, the best corn seeds, to your neighbors? Yes. Well, I don't get it. Why? Well, have you ever heard about cross-pollination? When they plant the good corn, the wind brings the pollen to my farm. If they were planting bad corn, eventually that wind will bring the pollen to my farm, and then I'll have bad corn. So I understood to have the best corn, I had to give them my best corn. And life, it's exactly the same way. When you are giving your best to others, it's what you get from life. Because your life is measured by the amount of lives you touch, not by how much you have. By the titles you carry, it's by how many lives you touch. Because our indifference creates our pain. When we are indifferent to those who are crying around us, it creates our own problems. We are all interconnected in the web of life. What I do impacts the other person. And my indifference elects me. It impacts me. There's another cute story about this mouse who was running around this farm. I'm speaking a lot about farms today. And this mouse, he was scared because the owner actually had placed a trap in the kitchen to catch him and put this huge piece of cheese there. So he was, he was suffering. As you might say, he was very anxious. He became depressed. He went to uh, see a mouse psychiatrist. The mild psychiatrist did not want to listen to his problem. Just place him on Prozac. Take this, he'll be all right. 
But that medication didn't solve the problem because medications are not the solution to our problems. That's not the cause. The cause of his problem was that there was a trap there. So he looked for his friends, a little bit of help from his friends. And the first animal that he fought, that he saw, was the chicken. Can you help me? And the chicken asked, what's your problem? Well, there is a trap waiting for me. I'm going to die. Help me, please. And the chicken said, that's not my job. I have more important things to do with my life. That's your life. What do you mean that's not your job? You got to help me. No, my job is just to eat this corns and give eggs. That's it. And then the poor mouse searched for the pig. What's the problem? There is a trap there. Please help me, protect me. But that's not my job. What's your job? I'm here rolling the mud. That's it. That's all they want me to do. Then this little mouse searched for the next animal and found a cow. And the cow said, that's not my job. I have more important things to do. I just give milk. They're happy. That's it. Later on that same night, this noise in the middle of the night, the trap caught the mouse. So the farmer's wife, she went to the kitchen to see how big the mouse was. And suddenly, in a house, there was another scream heard. When she flipped the lights on, it wasn't the mouse in the trap. It was actually a venomous snake. And the snake put the venom into her leg. Suddenly, she felt dizzy. Here came her husband, took her to the hospital, and the doctor said, I'm so sorry. There is nothing we can do about this. If you're bitten by the snake, you're going to die. Take her home and allow her to say her less words to her relatives. So the husband is crying, and he asks his wife, can I do anything for you? And she says, well, I am so hungry right now. Anything to give me strength. What can I do for you, sweetheart? Can you do some uh, chicken soup? <laughs> he went outside. He got the chicken. And that became the soup. And then she died. The close relatives came by, and now we had a large family, and we had to feed these people. So he went out, and who he find? The pig. He killed the pig and served his immediate family. And then, after three days, they did the funeral. The entire village came, and they had to feed a lot of these people who he killed, the cow. Our indifference impacted our lives. Because our life is measured by how we impact other people's lives. Your importance is directly related to how important you are to other people by your actions. So we will achieve our peace when we are conquering our inner conflicts and we're helping those around us to conquer their own. The spiritist message about life is that we are here in evolutionary experience. And we have been here many times. We call this process reincarnation. Just like any word in the English dictionary, here we have re at the beginning of the word, which is the prefix. Re stands for again. At the end we have shun, which is a suffix, and that stands for an action. Whenever you find shun in a word, it means an action is taking place, conversation, manipulation, aggravation. And then we have in, which means enter, and carne, which means flesh. So what does reincarnation stand for? The action of re-entering the flesh. We have re-entered the flesh many times, you as an individual. And all the differences that we see, all the injustice that we see, were created by our own hands. The creator, it's not an evil entity that chooses some people to suffer and other people to be happy. Gives us all equal opportunity, because that's what all justice stands for, to give us all equal opportunity. And with our free will, we design our future. 
So our present is the direct result of what we have done with our past, and our future will be the result of what we're doing with our present. So we're constantly shaping our lives by what we do towards other people. So there are many conflicts that we're born with, the family that we have, in which we believe that we're placed at the wrong scenario, and that disturbs our peace. Spiritism helps us change the perception of our problem by giving us the understanding that we are at the right place at the right time for our evolutionary needs. You're not at the wrong place. You're not with the wrong people. You are at the right place, having the perfect opportunity to develop your potential as eternal spirit. You have within you the seeds of patience, the seeds of comprehension, the seeds of forgiveness, the seeds of love. But just like any other seeds, a seed needs time to develop, the right conditions to develop. So your life was placed with all the right conditions for you to develop yourself. And if you are fulfilling the needs of your evolutionary experience, you will experience peace. You are walking towards the light. And as you walk towards the light, you are bathing yourself with light. The more selfless be you become, the more light happiness you experience. The more selfish you become, the more you distance yourself from God, from the light, from peace. Because peace is nothing but the result of us fulfilling our obligations to better ourselves. So when we are experiencing great problems because of our relatives, because of our social status, or because of our physical condition, look at it as this is an opportunity for you to grow. God is not against you. Life is not against you. We are against ourselves by the bad choices that we make. If you are sick, and this is some sort of irreversible sickness, it's an opportunity that life is given to you. Through your sick body, you are cleaning your soul of the real diseases that come from our spirit. If you're having difficult people around you, these are people who are helping you develop your potential. Because you can only exercise forgiveness, patience, love with difficult people. If you go up and meditate in a mountain, you're not promoting yourself. You're not evolving. You are surrounding yourself with the tranquility of the mountain, but you're not exercising patience, peace. How can you exercise that in the middle of the turbulence? What is patience? Patience has two parts, pat and shunts. Shunts, the suffix, stands for science. Science stands for knowledge. Knowledge stands for knowing. What does pat stands for? It comes from Greek. It means peace. So what is to have patience? The knowledge of being at peace. Knowing how being calm. How can we develop patience? Only when we have disturbing people around us. It seems paradoxical, but you can only develop the muscle of patience when you have people provoking you. There is a South African adage that says, calm seas do not make good sellers. If you want to be a good seller in life, you need rough seas. That's what these experiments are all about. These moments that you call them difficulties that disturb our peace, they're nothing but an opportunity for you to develop your potential as a human being. We like to label these moments troublesome to disturb our peace because we don't understand what they're there for. But with the Spiritist message that gives us the right perception of life, we know that life is constantly fighting for our growth. When we are settling for less, pain comes to help us push ourselves forward so we can achieve a better state of ourselves. 
We're all supposed to be up here, but we settle for less. And when we settle for less, pain comes into place to help us so we can put ourselves in the right position. And that's, unfortunately, we choose through pain, when it can actually be through love. How can we achieve peace and growth through love? By understanding who you are. By a constant self-analysis. By constantly understanding that you are here to improve all these negative aspects of yourself. The moment we awake to that reality, everything else changes. The world changes because we don't see the world with our eyes. We see it with our experience. Once we change the experience, we change the perception of the world. Do not wait for a painful moment for you to achieve your peace, your knowledge that you need to fight for peace on yourself. Do not wait for disturbances in your life. Do it right now when you have the opportunity. Remember the airplane that fell in the Hudson River a couple of years ago, and thankfully everyone was saved? Inside the airplane there was this man that he said when he heard those three most important words in his life, he suddenly learned so many things about his, himself. The pilot said through the speaker, embrace for impact. At the moment, he knew he was dying. During those couple of seconds, he had this psychological phenomena in which you see your entire life in the flesh before your eye. And he learned three lessons while the airplane was actually falling because he knew he was about to die. Lesson number one, he always remembered that he was never at peace experiencing happiness because he waited for special moments to happen. When those special moments came, he never enjoyed it. Christmas, for example, there's a lot of people who wait for Christmas to be happy. And when Christmas arrives, they gather in family to speak about those who are not present. That's not peace. They wait for Thanksgiving to be happy. Thanksgiving is an opportunity to be thankful to our relatives. We're waiting for a day to make it special. And realized that he never enjoyed those days to begin with. And after he survived, he decided that he would create his special day. He wouldn't wait for Christmas. He wouldn't wait for Thanksgiving. He will make his day special whenever he wanted. And since we have normal days every day, we don't appreciate the normal day. We only appreciate things when they're actually not there. How many times? We're so in love with a loved one. And we don't realize that we like them this much. And we never say that we love them. We realize that once they're gone. And now we make a beautiful funeral for them out of guilt. And then we take flowers to their coffin. You know, take flowers to them when they're alive and they can smell those flowers. What's the point? That's guilt right there. Don't wait for those moments to happen. To say, I love you, when they can't hear you. Say it now. When you arrive home, every day that's the norm. Someone is there waiting for you. The dog is jumping on you. Don't wait for the dog to be run over by a car to realize how happy you were that day that the dog was there. When we pray, the functions of prayer is to be thankful. It's not that God needs to hear us saying, thank you for this or thank you for that. It's the fact that when we make a list, to find out what we are thankful for, suddenly we realize all the things that we have. Because we're so disturbed by the things that we lack that we don't realize what we have. So to be thankful is to be aware that these things are present in our lives. Be thankful for your health. Isn't that a reason for us to be at peace? Because there are so many, many people now that will give everything that they can't 
to experience what you are experience, health. You all remember the great actor Patrick Swayze from the movie Ghost? This is a famous man, gorgeous, good-looking, had a lot of money, yet he died of pancreatic cancer. That man gave anything to have what you have right now, health. Yet, are we at peace because we have it? No. We are concentrated in what we lack. So to be at peace is to realize we have this thing. Don't wait for something to happen to realize. Because that man in the airplane, he received his second chance. He decided that he will make the day special whenever he felt he made the day special. Another important lesson that he learned uh, as the airplane was falling is that he had many fights with his wife. Many of them. And I know that has nothing to do with you guys because I don't see fighting people here. But he had many fights with his wife. And the fights were usually about who was right. Don't we fight for that all the time? Don't we break the peace between two people? We are speaking about the peace in the world. We, we cannot have, manage peace between two people. And the fight could be as, you know, who was the actor that played in that movie? You say Patrick Swayze, he says Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's a fight for the next two weeks. So he decided that it was not important for him to be right, it was important for him to be happy. If all the fights that we have, we stop to think, do I want to be right or to be happy? We would leave a much more peaceful life. As simple as walking to a restaurant and the person that went before you never left the door open for you, there are some people. They destroy their night because of that. Isn't that foolish? Do we want to be right or do we want to be happy? Do we agree that they slam the door against us? No. But am I going to disturb and ruin my night because of that? No. It's not important for that to happen. I would not give that moment such importance to destroy my night. Because it's important to be happy, not to be right. To achieve peace in the world, it will come from peaceful individuals. Peaceful individuals will create peaceful families. If you want to be a Mahatma Gandhi, a Nelson Mandela, it will probably be very hard for you. Probably you're not involved with politics. But you could be a Mahatma Gandhi, a Nelson Mandela, and a Lung Kardec inside your house with your family. You be the peace warrior with those five people. If you manage to send your peace to these people by choosing to be happy, by understanding them, you're not agreeing with the wrongdoing that they're doing. You are understanding, you are comprehending their imperfections, but you are imposing yourself to become a better individual. You helping world peace. If you manage to live in peace with your co-workers, it's not that you agree with what they do, you live peacefully with, uh, with them. You understand them. You comprehend them. You're able to understand their flaws because you're working on yours. You are promoting world peace because peace in the world begins peace with you. Just like Joanne Evangelist said, in the opening reading done by our sweet, beautiful Nancy. Let's achieve our inner peace by conquering ourselves. Let's fight for peace, not with others, not arming ourselves, but conquer our inner conflicts. And we will experience happiness, harmony, as a consequence of our choices. Pray for those around you. When you're walking towards your job, pray for your co-workers. When you're going to school, pray for them. You don't have to get on your knees. Your, hot, your eyes, they don't have to be closed. You don't have to fold your hands. This is a vibration that you send to them, that you want them to be well. And as you wish for them to be well, you will channel the light of God. And this light, before reaching the other person, it will go through you. So before it benefits the other person, it will benefit you. 
When you are taking a perfume as a gift to someone, you are the first to be bathed by the aroma. The same goes with love, with peace, with light. You get to be enlightened first before you light the light of others. This is the message of the great poets of life, the great artists. Art is here to establish peace. And this is why Castro Alves came through the hands of Chico Xavier to summarize in a single poem what the speakers are trying to say for hours during a lecture, a poem that he entitled, March On. In other words, let's move ahead. We are tired of remaining stationary. Let's look and move towards the future. When he said that life is full of mysteries and compassed of lights of beauty, which compels us to evolve. From God we emanate, multiple forms we reincarnate, longing for perfection and love. In humanity we seek the truth from many myths, yearning for peace and evolution. We cause in our multiple lives and deaths, victims of our own disillusion. From the eternal struggle, building ourselves from the rubble, we learn ways to overcome. Despite the pain and misery, nevertheless, we grow ceaselessly from darkness to dawn. From the raindrop, a plant reaches the top, triumphant at last. The root appears to be gloom, but manure converts to perfume, transmutation at its best. The plant will be crowned with flowers all around, birds opera on the arrival. But flowers too shall pass, their martyrdom is a bless for the ground revival. From nature we are taught, work hard, that's the law, all life is in movement. Sculpting through sacrifices, we'll carve blocks of vices, inside a stone lies a monument. Lessons from suffering and pain, change will always reign, even narrows, tyrants without seas. Under the law of reincarnation, through missions, trials, and expiations, they will too be messengers of peace. Let no one be idle. Today's angel was yesterday's Adam. Perfection is everyone's destiny. Life's purpose, splendid. God's love, transcendent. Our school, universe's eternity. On earth from time to time, sublime beacons of light dissipates the shadows away. Their presence are felt forever as they dwell, transforming light into day. Never uh, in history a sacrifice such as the one portrayed by Christ transpired for the sake of truth. From the cross the message is heard, forgive all, always serve your pain, I will soothe. It's Socrates and the hemlock, it's Caesar's war being fought in flaming oppression and cruelty, it's Selene and his art, the imperialism of Bonaparte spreading domination and tyranny. It's Dr. King's, I have a dream, Lincoln's speeches never seen, the incarnation of renovators. It's the embodiment of humility, from the charitable Francis of Assisi, the gospel resuscitator. Blessed be the teachers who illuminate the seekers, inspiring virtues and light. Bliss is yours to conquer, although perfection is yonder, your progress is bright. In the entire universe, divine heavenly verses decree, march on. A celestial love awaits, have hope, have faith towards the infinite to come. Thank you, Spiritist Society of North Beach, for inviting me once again, because I realize there are many speakers better than I to address this topic to this distinguished audience. Thank you for my friend Jeffrey, Tiago, and Thais for accompanying us. Thank you, God, for the blessing of speaking, and to you all, thank you for listening.